Well, we have another week worth, or I should say weekend worth, of some Sonic entries, Sonic fan entries, if you will. The first one is by somebody's, <coughs> by somebody we may all we may all know, but I'm not going to say their name. It was posted about a day ago, one day, eleven hours ago, and it's basically entitled "Something That's Really Been Bothering Them," version 2.0. And this is what they said, and I quote: "This is something." I should have added from the previous time, but I didn't really give it a lot of thought until the last couple of days. When Sonic acts like a heartless blank, his friends hardly ever call him out for it. Only two times was he rebuked, and they were basically for something that was forced for the sake of shock value. One. Sonic shooting his mouth off in front of Tails and his parents, even insulting them, not once but twice. Two, Sonic giving up in 2:36. Yeah, I said it. He gave up. And while I'm glad he got called out, and while I'm glad he got called out for those moments, even if they were heavenly contrived, my question is, why isn't Sonic ever called out for being such a jerk in other instances? Take 233 for example. Why isn't anyone calling Sonic out for jeering Jeffrey on the witness stand? I get the fact he's guilty and caused trouble, but he acted worse in that courtroom than the one on trial. Worse yet, they all know Sonic was going through the same thing Jeffrey was concerned going through the same thing Jeffrey was concerning Sally. And not yet one and not yet one of them ever said Sonic was out of line there which he was. What kind of message is that sending when the so-called hero acts like a bigger jackass than the criminal they're trying? That's o that it's okay because he's the big shot hero? Well, you might say that, but um, I think in a sense what this individual is trying to say is why didn't they call him out for that? You got to realize that from a story, from a story standpoint, uh, the hero would basically from a story standpoint they'd rather be on the side of the hero than on someone that as far as they're concerned for the past few years I guess comic storyline wise or comic timeline wise for the past couple of years timeline wise in the comic had basically been lying to them and not being truthful with them and basically also was aligned secretly with an enemy that they don't trust all right, another example they have, and continuing on, and I quote, 235, Sonic violently slams Silver into Antoine's bed, and not one person, person asked him why he did that. Certainly someone saw him do it, and it shocked him. Or oh, how about leaving Antoine in the hands of Jeffrey, the so-called traitor? Okay, as far as the Silver thing goes, Again, you said again. This individual said it best, and I think if they they know who they are, they they should understand. Storyline wise, Sonic was going through a tough time. He was basically broken down, if you know what I mean. All right. Continuing on, you're telling me no one is going to demand an explanation for that this behavior at all. And of course, it's and of course, least we all forget Sonic's despicable joke. Oak to Mecha Sally in 236. Now I know Amy at least heard it, and yet she just overlooks that horrible mockery, that horrible mockery with a sweetie. Please get back to business. What is wrong with this picture? Sonic knows Eggman did something horrible to his girl in 234, and now he's cracking jokes about it in front of his friends who look up to him. What the heck? I'm sorry, but that is completely unexcusable behavior. Sonic should not be getting away with this. Stressed out or not, you don't do things like that if you're a noble hero. This is what heartless blanks do because they enjoy acting smug and showing off. I'm serious. I wanted to backhand Sonic badly when I read that. 
His words were as insulting as mocking someone with life-threatening cancer. Quote, Oh, so sorry you're ill and all, but you know, I'd be so much cooler if it ha ever happened to me. I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again just to hammer it in. Sonic is an absolute disgrace of a hero. There are lines you don't cross when you're someone people look up to as a role model. And Sonic is acting, and Sonic is anything but at one. Or should I say, Flynn's version of Sonic is an absolute disgrace. Anyhow, that's all I have to say for now. If you want to add anything or discuss this, please leave a comment below. Please, no flaming comments. If you don't agree with me on this, I really don't care. But keep your comments respectful if you're going to leave one. I will not tolerate being insulted for expressing my opinion here. Alright, and that's basically entitled by the first person as something that's really been bothering them. Version 2.0. Now, if this individual read or listened to my last post, listened to my last video, the I think you kind of got an answer. As to basically why Sonic's been acting, as, you, as they would point out, as a jerk. Or being smug and cracking jokes about Sally's condition. You see... You see, if what was mentioned in the last video about the whole Pender situation wanting to ban, ban the se sale of Knuckles Archive 4 is true, and Sega is becoming more involved because of that, there's your answer, my friend. It's not totally Flynn's fault, although you have the right to want to put blame on him if you want to. You have that right. But the truth is, if Sega's more involved, there's your, there is your answer right there. Sega is basically saying, hey, if we're going to be involved, we want to see a Sonic that represents the Sonic in the games. That's what he wants. Oh, well, that's what they want. And sorry for that, that was my dog in the background. Anyway. Let me know what you guys... Anyway. Let me know what you guys think about that one. And I'm going to try to get to the next one. Try to get to the next one without any interruption. Try to shut the window a bit so my dog doesn't bark too much. But anyway, the second one. Looking at it, again, with this weekend full of Sonic fan entries. Now, unlike before, I will not be providing no links, so I want you guys to try to guess who these individuals are. Anyway. The second one was posted about 20 hours, 20 and a half hours ago. It was posted about 20 and a half hours ago. And there, the, the title of this entry by this individual is called The Real Superpower of Not Working as a Team. And this is what they have to say. Okay, this is something that's starting to piss me off a great deal. Now remember, this is the individual, this is not me, this is the person that wrote this entry 20 hours, 20 and a half hours ago. And okay, restarting, I quote. Okay, this is something that's really, okay, okay. Okay, this is something that's starting to piss me off a great deal. I've already discussed it with three Flynn fans. Two of them said I had a point and I might be right. The other didn't reply with as much as virtual in confidence as usual when I explicitly state that Flynn sucks at something or cannot write something. What is it this time? Teamwork. For something that's been hammered down our throats 
a few too many times by the series as a whole, Sonic and company kind of suck at working as a team. And don't say it's justified in story because they don't currently have a dedicated strategist to coordinate them because this started to set in before Sally's robotization. You see, I have noticed that the teams we that the teams we have don't really function as a group of individuals who have their own strengths and skills, but more as a single entity that act as one. Now you could say it makes them a fantastic team if they work together, except they aren't functioning as a team because the characters are just bum rushing robots and goons and beating the tar out of them as if they were all Sonic. Back in the days of Sad AM and intelligent comic writing, the characters would often split into smaller groups to pursue separate objectives. Sonic pulling distraction duty, Rhoda stealing roboticizing parts for the de-roboticizing project, Sally stealing the needed data, etc. The difference was that typically the whole team would go whereas now ow, they tend to send three or four guys who all have to stick together or they get overwhelmed and picked off. The results in things like Sonic standing around while Sally hacks something with Nicole or the non-powered heroes struggling to stay alive while as, while as Sonic and Bunny bring down an especially tough mech. It gets worse in the Mecha Sally arc. Team fighters always do the same thing at the same time, to the point that the comic would probably be better if it was Sonic alone with the others talking to him via earpiece. For the amount of things that are done that actually require Tails to be there in person and nothing so far and nothing so far has actually required Amy, proving again that she's worthless and only serves to egg on Sonic's joke assery instead of having more Instead of having a more useful character like Nicole, who could play voice of reason, keep things level, and actually be a major help saving Sally. As such, if one of them starts fighting robots, they all stop fighting robots. Tails never actually uses the tornado to provide air support. No one ever tells Sonic to focus, ex to focus exclusively on Mecha Sally and KO her before she can get away. And there are only three of them. So... They can't even split up slightly more? It's practically awful in 239 when, where Sonic gives up the best chance he had to rescue Sally in forever to double back and help with the cleanup even though Tails, Amy, and the locals can easily handle that themselves. This reminds me of a, this reminds me a lot of a tabletop RPG. You see, when playing through a tabletop RPG campaign, be it D&D &D or anything, you may often find a situation in which splitting the party may benefit you. More experienced players will shy away from this since splitting the party is a pain in the ass for the DM slash GM who controls the entire world and is basically a god to your puny little character. This is because we have to juggle two separate groups of adventurers, of adventurers deal with all the good stuff like combat at gaining experience and encounters with the big bad between them all between them all while keeping the group who are not currently being focused on entertained enough to pay attention this is highly frustrating and may often result in the group that are either smaller or less important to run into lakes of fire huge explosions mechanical or gigasauruses t-rexes are not too big and toothly enough, or the old favorite of falling rocks that will hit and kill everyone with no rolls to stop it. My point is that Flynn is the GM, and the cast or the players who have to stick together to avoid horribly punish. Okay, my point is, my point here is that Flynn is the GM, and the cast or the players who have to stick together to avoid being horribly punished for splitting up. This even happens during Sonic, Sonic Sally and Nicole's assault on the Death Egg in 225-230. As well as further emphasizing why the heroes are morons for only sending three people, one of them who is a mere badass normal, and another whom has no physical form outside of New Mobotropolis 
into the enemy base. 